Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery. And thank you for joining me today. I'm so excited to show you two hot things. One is our new product, which is the Center It Kit. It's all for quilting and getting quick, precise placement, either on the design wall, design table, or even under the needle. And of course, at the end of today's program, we're gonna reveal the Small Town Charm August version. And I love some of the comments that many of you have been saying. Hi, Sue Brown, nice to have you here. I know you're joining so you can see what you're gonna be doing on Saturday, right? And um, let's see, but I like Chris Yost said, we need a toy store for Christmas. I'm gonna file that away. I like that idea. I did have another idea, but that might, yours might trump mine, so we'll see. And Retha Ranke says, we need a church. And I said, everybody needs a church, right? So that's not today's, but. Um, and then I also really like the idea from, um, where is she? Seth, Sweets and Stitches says, she wonders if August will be a library. It's not a library, but that's a very good idea. Very good idea. I love to read for sure. So, um, you know. It's a, it's a great thing. And a wonderful thing to encourage young children to do is use their local library because, you know, reading opens up the world to young and old alike. So let's get back to the topic at hand, which is our Center It kit template. So let's take a look at the kit itself. So when uh, you purchase it, it is uh, a nice big storage envelope that you can continue to use to store all of the templates in there. And it comes with five different shapes. So you're gonna have a squares, rectangle, hexagon, 45 degree diamonds and 60 degree diamonds, plus two sets of target stickers. Now the target stickers are really different, right? They have the yellow ones, which are round, and then square ones, which are larger than the opening on the template. So let's go ahead and you know, I'm gonna put this nice new one away and get out um, partials of one that I already opened. How about that? So we'll take a look at this circle all, you're going to get three of each template in the kit. So you'll find three 12-inch circles, three 12-inch squares, three 12-inch hexagons, and so on and so on. They have an opening in the center, this square opening. They have crosshair, and they have measurements, you know, two, three, four inches, revealing to you what size shape each one is. And why do you get three? Well, you get three because it's easy. Uh, you might find that 12 is too big for a lot of your projects. Maybe you have an eight by eight hoop that's your largest hoop. And you find that all of the quilting you do is gonna fit in an eight, eight inch hoop. So then you can cut this down. And there's a couple ways to do that. You, one, like on the round one, is with scissors. You literally just go and cut the template, the plastic template, and then just trim right along that outer line to the size that you want it to be. And I'm not gonna trim this whole thing, but I just wanted you to see how easy it cuts. So it really cuts beautifully. Then you're going to, you know, whatever you wind up with, right? You'll have an eight inch, a 12 inch, and another 12 inch until you decide you wanna trim that one down. So you can also use a rotary cutter. So I'll go ahead and I'll trim this one to nine inches. Now notice I have a cutting mat on top of my hoop mat. I'm not cutting on my hoop mat. <laughs> we all know, we don't, definitely don't wanna do that. So I'm just aligning that blade with the edge of the ruler and I'm just gonna slide right across. You might have to do two runs. And actually for some reason, I'm not doing that in a straight line, but there we go. So then I'm trimmed, I would continue to do that around all four sides and then I have the size that I want. Now remember, you get three, so you you can always leave one 12 inches if you feel you know you you might go big sometime. So let's see. So why do you need it? Well, let's take a look at this black and white little um, quilt block. Finding the center of a circle can be really hard. There's no straight lines, you know, to align 
with a foot on the machine or a needle, anything like, uh, or a hoop edge. So the, um, these shape templates allow you to align the outer edge of the actual applique with the shape on the template. And then you have your uh, opening for your target sticker. So when I'm working on my work surface or on my design wall and I'm planning my quilting for uh, the whole project, I would use the yellow target sticker. And when I position that in the hole, I just want to make sure that the crosshair on the target sticker is aligning with the crosshair on the template. And I would repeat that for, you know, all three of those circles. And then I know that my uh, positions are all marked. I'm confident they're going to, my embroidery is going to land right where I want it. And so I'll do the last one. And eventually, after we do this, I'm going to show you an, a couple other examples, and then we'll move to the blue target stickers and why you would use them. So we'll just leave that there. And I'm going to show you the 60 degree um, shape template. And here's a, well, I could lie to you and tell you that this is, you know, perfectly pieced, but really it's a, a panel, a cheater quilt you know, it, it's giving you the, the right idea. So here, I'm going to make sure that my crosshairs are hitting the diamond dead center, right? So they go out at the edge and hit that diamond in equal increments on each side. And now I can go ahead and position my uh, target sticker right inside. And depending on the orientation of my design, that would be the direction that I put the arrow. But again, aligning that circle crosshair on the target sticker with the crosshair on the template. And that's super easy. Okay, here's the 45 degree angle. Now this is a, like a mini Lone Star. This too is also a panel. Someday I'll learn how to piece, but these are pretty fun. <laughs> and they get the point across. Okay, so now I have to be careful and make sure that I am centering this appropriately. You know, now I have a solid star in the center. I do have a chalk line here that will help me align. And of course, if you if this was pieced and seamed, that most certainly would help you also. So I can see that this is centered and then I just position my next target sticker right in there. And depending again on the orientation, the size of your hoop, so forth, then I, that's the direction of the arrow. Now that's ready to go. I can take that to the machine, center my needle over it. But what if you have like a big lone star? Now this one is a work in progress and it is really a big, a big one. Uh, the star itself is 54 inches. I'll just kind of give you a little glimpse of the center. So each individual diamond needs an embroidery design dropped on it in, you know, uh, at the machine. So I'm not going to mark each individual diamond here with target stickers. There are, oh, three, you know, six, however many in each leg of the long, long Lone Star. So that's going to take forever. But if I use my blue stickers, my blue stickers are larger than that hole. So I'm going to hold that so you can see the hole. And then I take the blue sticker and I position it so that it is, its crosshair is aligned perfectly with the crosshair on the template. And now this is sticky. See how it, that adhesive is covering the hole. And so that's tacky. So when I put that onto the, the uh, diamond shape, and just finger press it down, it's gonna stay there. It's gonna stay in place. So I do that right under the needle and I'm gonna show you that on a hexagon in a minute. But first, I'm wondering if there's any questions before we go any further, before I bring that hexagon into uh, the scene. Yeah, let's see, let's go. Uh, Joanne Banco, she says, cutting mad, yeah, right. Maybe you have a, a dime hoop mat that is uh, smaller than it was when you first bought it, right? You cut it in half. I know we have several here that have been chopped in half. Okay, so let me bring that hexagon over. This is such an adorable little project. 
So as you can see under uh, the camera, we have all, we have five hexagons. And I'm actually going to decorate each one with a different design. Yeah, I did print templates. But you know, that can get a little tedious, right? What if I'm going to use multiple designs, maybe like 10 or 12, then you know, I don't really have to print these out because it's just one continuous shape. And all I want to do is center each of these designs on each hexagon. So the hexagon uh, template, I've already twin trimmed down. And remember, you get three of these that are 12 inches. So I've trimmed mine down to five inches to make it easy to uh, find the center of the four inch. I could have cut it to four, but you know, that's okay. I can leave it at five. That gives me a little bit more flexibility for the size of the hexagons that I'm going to use. And then I'm going to put that target uh, template um, target sticker, sorry, right over that opening. And remember, right, it's sticky. So that's going to stay in place. And when I take it over to the machine, I'll show you how I'm going to um, move the needle to it. All right. So if you just bear with me a second. I'll go over to the um, machine, attach the hoop, and then I'll move my design Oh, I actually put that on the wrong one. So I'm just going to, I'm going to change that template over to the hexagon that's in the lower left-hand corner because that will be easier for you to see. So with my jog keys, I can just go ahead and move the needle over to the center of that target sticker. I can lower that presser foot, make sure I'm dead center. Right now, if I want to confirm that I'm really square on the design, then I can use my um, trace feature, which allows me to go north. And I just want to make sure that I'm staying on that center line. And I can go, you know, uh, east or west. I'm probably getting disoriented here, <laughs> but that's a quick way to do that. Now, if you have a top of the line machine. You could use the uh, projector. You could also use the scanner. But I'll tell you, I find this is so fast. This is just the fastest way to do it. And that big Lone Star that I showed you, you know, that's 54 inches wide. Boy, that I don't want to scan and I don't want to use the projector on every single one of those little diamonds. So um, it's, it's just awesome. I, I love that. It's really great. And oh, Amy McCarthy, you like that multicolor Lone Star here. Why don't I hold that up so you can see it? This hopefully is something that will be available to all of you someday soon. So I'm going to hold it up in this camera because I think that you'll get a bigger view. But isn't that cool? Isn't that beautiful? So, you know, you would you would quilt that like you do the dream panel, right? Kind of element by element makes it really fun. So let's see. Uh, so Joanne, you're thinking of using those templates for pillow top. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a big project. Like my little hexy um, uh, pillow top there is very nice, really very nice. Yeah. And um, Corey, yeah, our camera, you say, is way out of focus. We're having some bandwidth problem here. So if you just bear with us, um, it will come back up and make it... Um, nice and crisp. Uh, we are working on that and in fact are upgrading our service. But you know, like anything during COVID, it takes a while to get those things done to have the new wires run and to have, uh, you know, the workmen come out and do that. So Rita, you love the templates. I, I love the templates too. They just make it fast, 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 fast. And you know, that's what it's all about. Many of you are doing a lot of quilting with your embroidery machines. And if you, you know, if you do anything over a 36 inch square, it's a lot of hoopings and it's a lot of placement. And that takes more time actually than the stitching of many of these quilting designs. So I love that. I just really love that. Okay, so I'll bet some of you would like to see the small town charms, right? Well, first let's talk about how much this product is. So it's very reasonably priced and it's $39.99 this a week and free shipping. We have a free shipping code. 
let me see if I can, there we go. So this, the free ship code is ship C I K seven three zero. Yeah. And uh, so I hope you'll take advantage of that. Hope you'll take advantage of that. Oh, Risa, you already got your uh, needles from last week. Glad to hear that. Yeah, we were able to ship them out right away. That was awesome. Yeah, we're really excited about this new product. Thanks, Reen. Thanks for watching and thanks for your kind um, comment. Yeah, that center it is just fast and easy and it's all about fast and easy, right? So as you know, all year we've been doing small town charms. And in January, we had the uh, quilt shop and February saw the sweet shop. And that's a collection of all of them, but go ahead, I'll just zoom through them individually. The sweet shop was in February. March was the dress shop. And the flower shop was April. And in May, we had the outdoor cafe because we were starting to get outside and enjoy the fine weather. Of course, now here in Texas, at the end of July, we're starting to go inside because it's like 102. In June, we had um, the town hall, which was kind of a crowd favorite. And then last month was Scoops, which is home of the giant cone. So super fun. And of course, it always comes in a five by seven and a seven by 12 version. All of these designs are free on our website and they come with downloadable instructions for both sizes. So I know that you're just dying to see, oh, <laughs> well, I kind of blew that because I do have one that I want to show you. Sharon Crowder, she sh uh, shared um, her small town charm. It's adorable. I love the fabric that she chose. She's got a great sky fabric and also a wonderful um, landscape. She even added a little hillside and so forth. She did a really nice job. And she has an embroidered tree behind her umbrella. So uh, hate to be repetitious, but we're going to do that again. <laughs> and isn't that fun? So this month is a gazebo. And it's kind of plain because I know many of you have your own ideas on how to add, how to embellish, how to customize. So there's space in the walkway, there's space inside the gazebo, there's space in the sky, there's uh, opportunity to put the, the, uh, a sign of your hometown uh, or maybe someone celebrating a wedding and there's uh, like a, you know, a bell hanging from the center of the gazebo. Yeah, it's simple, but I know that many of you will really embellish it to your heart's content. Uh, content. So the five by seven is a vertical design. Uh, so it's five inches across by seven inches tall. And while the seven by 12 is more horizontal. So we're going to go over into software. I'm just going to slip out of here and select my software. And I'm going to show you the step outs. Although this does come with instructions, I thought you would like to see the instruct the step outs in software. So easy enough to do. Our first stitch is our first color is an outline for the sky. And then you'll lay your sky fabric over top and stitch the tack down. The next color is a, the, the outline for the landscape, the grass, and you'll stitch that and then cover that, oh, cover that with fabric. And um, once that's covered with fabric, you will then stitch the satin outline of the sky. And we don't quite finish the grass yet because we're going to do the placement guide for the sidewalk and the details for the sidewalk. And you will trim the excess applique fabric and finish those edges with those um, elegant satin stitches at the edge. Finally, the last, uh, well, the last outline is of all of the grass on the bottom. And then we start on the cupola and then the post in the background of the gazebo. So I stitched mine in a silver thread. So now not metallic, you know, a very light gray so that it would be a bit darker than the post in the foreground. The floor and the ceiling of the gazebo are the same color. You'll stitch that next. And then the roof followed by um, the, <laughs> Come on. 
followed by the post in the foreground. And then there's a, a black outline on the small post on the banisters, you know, at the lower edge of the gazebo. And then a horizontal um, banis banister railing for the bottom post. And then we trim the roof and the bottom of the gazebo in one color, black. I used black. And um, the brick detail, well, this isn't the detail, this is just the brick. So I kind of did that in a terracotta color and then added a beige color for the detailing to give you the, the look of the um, mortar. And then finally, grass fills in the very front of the gazebo. So that's pretty simple, right? So let's take a look at the, um, the seven by 12, which is a little different. The seven by 12 doesn't have any applique. So you're gonna prepare your fabrics by, um, and you know, these are generous sizes. So the sky is six by eight and the grass is, um, what did I say? No, I'm sorry. So the sky is 14 by eight and the grass is 14 by six. And you'll piece them together, right sides together. Now I suggest pressing open that seam. You know, normally in quilting, we, pre we press to the dark side. But I think uh, for this instance, it's best to press that seam open because you're gonna have the hillside, which is a complex fill, stitch over that seam and you don't want a hard bump in there. So select a grass color you know, uh, for thread that matches your grass fabric because you really don't want that horizon, that hard seam to be visible, you know, you and so you want that rolling landscape to kind of blend with the fabric itself. So I find if you match that fairly well, that's the way to go. Now, when you position your template on the fabric, you you're not placing the horizontal line of the template on the seam of the sky and the grass. You you're going to concentrate on the complex fill of the landscape of that kind of rolling hill background and you want that to be centered over that seam. So pay attention to that when you're doing it. Those instructions are are in the written instructions that come with it. Just, you know, as a rule of thumb, that's pretty good. And then, then you know, hoop it up, make sure you are centering it uh, horizontally on your space. And then let's pop over to software so you can see how the rest of that stitches out. So here we go. So our first color is actually that complex fill. It's the landscape in the background. And then the detail, the placement guide for the sidewalk followed by the detail, the satin outline, and then the trunk of the tree in the background and the foliage of the tree. Now I matched the foliage and that rolling landscape, the same thread. I thought, you know, they're kind of in the in the background of the scene. So that would be a lighter shade of green than anything that occurs in the front. So I just match them, but of course you can do whatever you'd like. Um, so then the next uh, part of the design is the cupola, followed by again, the posts that are in the background and the ceiling and the floor, the roof, the foreground posts, the outline of those lower posts, and the horizontal, you know, the banister on top of the fence area or the whatever you would call that lower portion of the um, gazebo and the outline of the roof and the floor, the brick, the detail, the martyr on the brick. Again, I chose a light color. And then we're going to have shrubs and grass in the foreground. And you can't really tell by this image, but I did use a darker color in uh, my final sample. So that would look like it was, you know, um, in the foreground, which, you know, it's, it's what we're trying to achieve, right? Foreground, background, you know, have it appear to be a, as realistic as we can. Of course, you know, I'm not uh, a, a total artist, you know, I just sketch well. So anyway, so, but isn't that fun? I mean, I think you're going to have a lot of fun. And like I said, I left a lot of space for you to embellish because I know people, really, many of you really like to add your own things. So this week, uh, this month, Small Town Charm, you're going to be able to add seagulls or birds in the sky, a flag or a pennant to the top of the gazebo, maybe a picnic table in the foreground, a bench. Uh, they're just some of the ideas. 
Okay, I hope you'll enjoy uh, stitching it out. I can't wait to see what the OML gang comes up with on Saturday with Sue Brown. Remember, you can participate in the sew along with Sue Brown at OML Embroidery. And you can find her on YouTube. Just go to Facebook or um, Google and, and search for OML Embroidery and you'll find everyone that enjoys doing these small town charms on the sew along on uh, Saturday morning. So. I really appreciate everybody watching. And next week, um, we are going to talk, I think, um, about hoop guards because uh, we have uh, lots of questions about hoop guards and it will put them on special. So thank you so much for joining me this week and we'll see you next week.